of them, Jesus said, we are going down because there is a son to be healed. There is somebody to be saved. There is a father to be restored. There is a woman who needs to be touched. There is somebody who needs to be discipled. There is somebody who needs to be healed. We cannot remain on the mountain. We have to descend down to where the work is. Where are you as a child of God? Where are you serving the Lord? What are you doing where you are? Because that is, God, that is why God has left you. That is why God has spared you. That is why God has given you the opportunity. The world needs us. There are people who are so hopeless. There are people who are looking for hope. You walk in this town, you find someone talking by himself. If you are driving down, you, it's very easy to knock someone because there are very many things that are happening in their lives. And they need you, and they need me. To communicate hope, to tell them that, yes, Jesus Christ is still on the cross, even if it is hard. The father was down in the hill with his son, and the disciples could not do anything. They were coming back. And that is why Jesus answered, Oh, faithless and twisted generation, how long am I going to be with you? How long am I going to bear with you? Bring him here. And Jesus rebuked the demons, and it came out of him, and the boy was healed instantly. Then the disciple came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? He said to them, because of your little faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible. Can't you imagine God has given us a mandate to go? Imagine God has given you and me a mandate to go. You know, when I was called, to serve the Lord, I thought I was going to be a pastor in the space of a local church. And then God took me out of the local church. Thank you, Reverend Maironi, for giving me the opportunity to serve here with you. But I'm serving in the space where I am sometimes asking myself, do you really know where I was called? You know, some of you here come to look for me in this office that Reverend Rokeo is in, in, in Milimani. No, my office is in Gong Road. My office is in Gong Road. I serve the children, the vulnerable in AIC. And they, your, your Excellency, thank you. Several years ago, you paid school fees for one of our children in Siapay Children's Home. Thank you. I, was, I, I could not miss that because I had no opportunity to say that. So that's where I am. And I see how God touches the life of children, of the vulnerable. The same way is touching the life of those who are blessed. But God has given you an opportunity in that space. And is telling you, just go. Just go. You don't need to know much. Just leave the gospel. Just allow people to touch the gospel in your life. Even in your smile. That lady who's bringing you tea. That man who is actually serving you need to know that you are a Christian. You are a, you are a disciple of Christ. That's what Jesus Christ was telling his disciples. Why? Because he is reigning on the cross and the mission is on and we are moving and is leading the way. Though we go through the valleys, but he is leading the way. Just know the person of the mission. Know the purpose of the mission. And then be there. Allow yourself to practice the mission. 
how I pray that the Lord is going to, wait, to send us and represent him where he wants us to be. Because that is the great commission. That is what. And that's the reason why we are still in this space. May God bless it. Niongose ebana popote ni enapo hadisiku yamisho. very grateful for reminding us this morning so that we will not live our lives in a careless way taken up by the things that we see but Lord renew our hearts and remind us of that whisper that you gave us and that calling that you gave us that each of us and if you are here and you are saying probably I missed there have been many thorns, many things that have happened until I am not clear about my mission and I need that clarity today that the Lord would make it clear for me to serve him just raise to the Lord your hand I pray with you for clarity just raise it to him as we pray together is there anybody thank you for that hand thank you for those hands Father, we thank you. And I bless you. That we are not an accident. But you've called us to accomplish that which you want each one of us to. Thank you for those hands that have gone up. You know where they are in their lives. I pray for clarity. And I pray for your leadership. Bless all of us. For we pray in Jesus' mighty name. God's people said, let's appreciate the Lord again. Thank you so much, Reverend Okeo, for leading us. We can be seated. Thank you. Good morning and praise the Lord. It's a cold morning, isn't it? But we are also here to celebrate the Lord's goodness and just thank God for his word as we think about the Holy Communion. The Holy Communion is about Christ. Actually, at the end of it, the scripture says, do this in remembrance of him. As we go to celebrate communion this morning, I want to invite each one of us just to ask the question, who is Christ in my life? What has he done for me? Am I faithful to him if he's really saved you? called you 
are you following him? Just as I invite the pastors to join me here, and the elders, if you can join me up front here, as we give communion, I want to ask that do a personal reflection on your life, and I'll be giving you a moment just to go before the Lord. And again, if there's any area, this is a time of reflection, if there's any area that you feel the Lord has spoken to you and said, yes, you do know me, but you are not following my way, just clear it with him, because as we take communion, we are actually telling Jesus our life is totally surrendered to you. We are totally surrendered to your leadership. The death that we would have died, you did die. And so we partake the element in saying the life I live is no longer mine, but it is yours. By the shedding of his blood, we are saying, Jesus, you passed through pain so that and went through the cross, shed your blood so that I can get the redemption of sin. I couldn't forgive, I couldn't be forgiven in any other way other than through your blood. And so, really declaring like Paul, saying, the life I live, I don't live for myself, but I live for Christ. So it's a very sacred moment as we go before the Lord in communion. Shall we pray together? And as you pray, just take your time to examine your own life. If there are things you need to square with the Lord, just do it personally. My prayer is that you will tell Jesus, I love you more than anything else, and that my life is fully surrendered to you. So, Father, we love you. We are grateful to you, Jesus, for coming. And in the place that we would have been, that we would have been condemned for our sins. You shed your blood so that we are forgiven of our sins. You gave your body to be beaten, to go through suffering so that we can receive healing. And so we are indeed very grateful. We are indebted to you even this morning as we celebrate the communion. I pray that Jesus, in a very special way, you reveal yourself to each one of us, of who you are in our lives, so that we may live for you and serve you while we are here on earth. We thank you and we bless you, for it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. The elders and the pastors will be serving the communion. We want to ask that when you receive the elements, if you have uh, accepted Christ as your personal savior, uh, please wait until we'll do it together. I'll let you know when we can all partake. So you just receive and hold to the elements and uh, we will serve together. Thank you.
received from the Lord what I also passed unto you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Shall we partake together? same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Shall we partake of the cup? Lord Jesus, we are so grateful. This moment of silence before you, our hearts are filled with joy. For the redemption you gave us, for the identity you gave us, 
for the gift of eternal life you gave us for the purpose so that while we are here on earth we know why we are here and as we celebrate you in this communion glorify yourselves in our lives lift us and teach us to walk in obedience that each day of our lives you will be indeed lord as we celebrate lord may that radiance of christ in the workplace and any place you've placed us be evident for the glory of your name so thank you we give praise to you for it is in jesus name i pray and god's people said Let's celebrate our Lord and thank him for this gift that he has given us. I invite the worship team to sing as the elders collect the cups. First time you are at AIC Milimani in our first service, we welcome you. We want you to feel welcome that you are part of this service. Uh, Your Excellency, this service used to be formerly the Swahili service, so we are now changing it. We have translation equipment, so they are all in English. So it's a service we are growing. Uh, the main service comes at 11, and so we are grateful. So if you are here and it's your first time, please raise your hand. We want to welcome you. If it's your first time you are visiting, we want to welcome you. Anybody visiting for the first time? Let's appreciate our guests here. Thank you right there. Thank you very much. You are highly welcome. And uh, immediately after this service, the, we have elders and lady leaders to welcome you. As you walk out to my right, there is a visitor's room. They are right there. Who are the elders on duty? If you can stand so that they recognize you. Thank you very much. Let's appreciate and the lady leaders. Thank you. Thank you very much. The Lord bless you. They will be there to uh, welcome you. If you are here in Nairobi, you found a church. Uh, but if you are going back, take our greetings. 
we want to now give to the Lord and we want to give cheerfully. It's our time to worship him. Uh, giving is part of worship. It's actually an expression of our love to God. He's given us so much. It's our opportunity to give. The Bible teaches us when we give, we give cheerfully. We give what we've prayed and asked the Lord so that when we come to his house, we can give to him in thanks to what he has done. Here at AIC Milimani, you have many ways to give. We do have the pay bill number 809109. And if you are giving an offering, that's your account. If you are giving your tithe, just write tithe. That is your account. We also have um, a machine. If you, if you have your card, you can swipe as you walk out. You can write a check to AIC Milimani. But you can also walk uh, here and give. Uh, we have baskets right here. So let me invite Reverend Munyambu, if you can come, join us so that you pray for us as we give. Church, may we be upstanding even as we pray for the offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you who is a missionary God, that you reached out and gave your son, your only begotten son, that we can be able to have eternal life. Creator of the heavens and the earth, fashioned us in your image and likeness. The one who owns cows in a thousand hills. The one who says gold and silver belongs to me. What is it that we can be able to give to you? This is just an act of stewardship. You have entrusted us with your time and talent and treasure. And for this reason, Lord, as we give, we want to give because it belongs to you. For we too are sheep of your pasture. And therefore we pray that, Lord, you bless our hearts, bless our attitude, that as we give, may it be able to be used for the furtherance of your gospel. For this is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. In Amen. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give cheerfully as the Hill Voices will be praising the Lord. Karibuni sana Hill Voices. Give to 
Amen and amen. Thank you. Let's appreciate the Hill Voices. That was not enough. <laughs> Thank you, Hill Voices. May the Lord bless you. Let me request that you be seated. Uh, you will come back. Thank you. Barikiwe. Tupigie buwana makofi kwa ajili yao. Wakienda. Asante. Your Excellency the President, Your Excellency the First Lady, I know you are coming to worship. I know you just wanted to come and you actually surprised us. I came from my office, I said it's 10 minutes to 8.30, so let me just come to see. But when I walked in, His Excellency was already walking inside. <laughs> and so thank you so much for joining us this morning. This is your home church, and we are so proud uh, of the faith that God honored. Uh, seven of you families, that's what I, I just got to know. Reading through our history, you are among our first elders in this church, and God honored your faith. From seven families starting this church to now a church that is over 3,000 uh, people, it's really grown. This is a, a great blessing, and we are very, very, very grateful. Even this service, we have said by next year, to ki Mungu akitusa idea, he first service it akwa full. Who have the same faith like me? Let's appreciate the Lord for that. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Our second service is full, but this one has to be full as well because there should be no empty seat here in the coming year. And so we'll all work towards that. We are grateful, sir. We do pray for you as a church. God has given you leadership work in this nation, and we know how heavy it is. And whenever you find time, you are always welcome to worship with us as, as you've done so. We are grateful. The last time you were here, we had not brought these seats. You blessed us. You are part of the people that gave generously for these seats. And so now we do have the seats uh, with us here, and we are indeed very grateful. So let me take this time to give Your Excellency just, if you can just say jumbo to us, we will be very grateful, sir. Karibu, Your Excellency. Good morning, church. Bwana Yesu asipiwe. I'm truly happy to be here this morning. Um, I'm told that this is part of the celebration of 30 years. I didn't know it was 30 years because uh, it looks like it was just the other day when we were here. I know uh, Reverend Mite has said 001. I don't think so <laughs> because I was among us the youngest of the elders. So I must have been number seven out of the seven. <laughs> but I want to say we thank God for the blessing of having this sanctuary and having this church. I'm very proud that God has enlarged your tent, and now we have 3,000 members. Uh, we celebrate God for uh, what has happened. Let me also say this morning, I'm very happy that uh, I'm part of this congregation. Uh, yesterday, um, when I was thinking of uh, I had a church engagement somewhere else, but I didn't manage to go, so I said, let me go to the home church. Um, I know next Sunday we are having the celebration, but I didn't get the letter. Somebody said, somebody sent the letter. I don't know who sent the letter. <laughs> but uh, I will try and see what I can do. If it will be possible for me to come, I will. If it will not be possible, Bam Samaha, and I wish you well in those celebrations. This morning, I thank God for our great country, Kenya, and uh, the many things God has done for us, the blessing of the rains, the blessing of our farmers, and the many things God has done for us so that we can be able to feed our nation, and many other things that God has done for us, the peace in our nation, the tranquility in our nation. I want to thank God for Kenya. And I want to um, say to all of us, as we have been told this morning, it is good for all of us to know the purposes of God in our lives so that we can pursue and we can accomplish what God has planned 
for each and every one of us. Um, in everything that we do, in business, in service, in leadership, that we may seek to know God's will and to pursue and attain and to ask God to help us to achieve that which is in his perfect design and destiny. Um, let me also say that this morning I want to uh, tell the church that as government we respect our constitution. The preamble of the constitution of Kenya says God of all creation. That is the beginning of the constitution of Kenya, meaning that we surrender to God. And that is why Kenya shall continue to be a God-fearing nation. And we will defend the freedom of worship in our republic. We will make sure that we don't compromise and there will be no limitations or compromise on the freedom of worship in Kenya. I know that there are proposals that have been made in some quarters about regulation of the church, regulation of worship, regulation of religious activities. I want to remind those who are pursuing that kind of exercise that the Constitution of Kenya is very explicit on the freedom of worship. And there will be no compromise whatsoever. There will be no limitation whatsoever on the freedom of worship in Kenya. Because apart from what the Constitution provides, we are a God-fearing nation and we will equally defend our faith. As Christians, as, religio as, as, as different religions, we will make sure that we, are, we protect the freedom of worship in Kenya. And I want to ask those who have ideas to allow religious leaders themselves to develop how they want to regulate themselves and how the church, how religious organizations are going to go forward. Because that was the recommendation of the task force I appointed under Reverend Taba Mushimi, that the religious body in Kenya will decide how they want to make sure that the freedom of worship in Kenya is protected. And I want to give assurance to the church and to the religious institutions in Kenya that we will defend the right and the freedom of worship in Kenya and it will not be compromised in whatsoever manner. And to conclude by saying that um, as uh, AIC Melimani continue to pray for our nation, continue to pray for the unity of Kenya, the prosperity of Kenya, and that all of us, as Kenyans, will know the will of God, will look for the will of God, pray for the will of God, and the will of God to persist and to be accomplished in Kenya. Asanteni sana kwa kunikaribisha hapa AIC Milimani leo. Na watakia heri, as you celebrate 30 years, uh, I'm sure if I don't uh, make it here, I will send a member of my family to come to make sure that uh, we celebrate together. Thank you very much. God bless you. I am here with uh, my wife, Rachel. Uh, and uh, my daughter, Mia. Uh, she's the last born. So uh, thank you very much. God bless you.
Thank you very much. We want to thank God that he is faithful and he has been able to bring us all the way to the end of this service. Church, let's be upstanding even as we bring this service to an end. Please appreciate the person who is standing next to you. That person is God's original. Do not there take them for granted. We appreciate God's faithfulness even as we celebrate these 30 years that the Lord has been faithful. Even as we leave the sanctuary today, please may we be able to remember the person of Jesus Christ. It is important that we be able to realize that is the beginning of our mission. And now as we pray that we go to practice what he has been able to call us into, let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you that under the great invitation you called us and said, come and come unto me, all you who are heavy laden, and you shall be able to give us rest. And your people from all walks of life, Lord, they have gathered into this sanctuary that they can be able to pour their hearts out to you. And we want to thank you because as we entered your gates with thanksgiving, we appreciate that, Lord, it is you who called us into your presence. We are the sheep of your pasture. And now we thank you that when we started this service, Lord, you have been faithful for your name's sake. In our praise and worship, in the congregation of him, Lord, we could be able to sense your presence amongst us. In the public reading of your word, because faith comes by hearing, and hearing your word, Lord, we thank you even as it was broken to us in nuggets that we can be able even to apply it. We thank you. We want to thank you, Heavenly Father, that even as we were able to participate in the Holy Communion, giving us an opportunity of physical symbols that they can be able to give us a spiritual reality, Heavenly Father, we thank you. As we gave our offering, having offered our bodies as living sacrifices, Heavenly Father, we thank you. And even now, Lord, as we are preparing to depart from this fellowship and assembly, isn't it not in your word that you have said, you shall bless our going out and you shall bless our coming in. And Heavenly Father, we thank you even for the activities that have been aligned for us in the course of the week. May you cause us to be productive to that end. Our hearts are yearning and eager that we shall be able to congregate back here again to worship you. But Lord, should we not be able to meet here, may we be able to meet out there and celebrate your goodness, love, and mercy. But should we not be able to meet either here or out there, may we be able to meet in the air when Christ comes to receive the church. For this is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's have a beautiful moment to share our eyeball-to-eyeball -eyeball ministry, our words of the grace to each other. And now may the grace and the love of God and the fellowship be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Please, church, let's observe the protocols of the day, even as the senior pastor leads the first family. Buana Bariki, as we wait for that.